What's up, YouTube? Retro Bro here with the Tales of Zestia review for you. So what we're going to cover here is story, gameplay, graphics, optimization on PC and consoles, as well as customer service when it came down to pre-order, whether it's worth it or not, all that good stuff, etc. Ladies and gentlemen, you are going to enjoy this game. It definitely gave me that RPG fix I needed since I haven't seen any decent RPGs in a while. You got intriguing characters. You have DBZ slash DSS Machina transformations so you can laugh at and crush your enemies. Themes of corruption due to government and religion. And last, beating all these ridiculously impossible odds through the power of friendship like any good shonen anime would do this game has brought a lot of new things to the table and has improved on things that was previously in other games as well so the most noticeable changes in this game and the most fun is the combat system first off you have seraphim which are spirits they can only be out when you have humans so if you have one human in your party and multiple seraphims, you're only going to be able to have a party of two. If you have two humans, then you can have out two seraphims. And that's the way the new party system works. Also, what makes this game really interesting is that you can have complete dominance in battle in this game. It's not easy to do, but when you become skilled with timing and setting up your moves, you become really good. Stun is extremely overpowered in this game if you hit an opponent with a hidden art when stunned it'll do a lot more damage if you're armatized and you do your special attack called the banish blast which you do within a combo when they're stunned they'll automatically die to one hit so one of the best strategies in this game so far is to really get good with your timing because if you parry an attack you don't just get energy to do combos like the older tails even though you do get that but you also get the counter attack which stuns them which now sets you up to go for the one hit ko the banishing blast one of the other things that you can do that works really well that i kind of learned wait late game and i wish i knew earlier is when you're specking your weapons, focus on getting your whole team to get their stun rate up. Because if you get them all to get their stun rate up, you can stun opponents more often and go for those one-hit kills or hitting with your hidden arts, which do more damage when they're stunned and win matches quicker. So the battle system is kind of easy to use but difficult to master so it makes battles a lot more enjoyable and you always feel like you're learning something new you can be seven to ten hours in this game and you're still getting tips and you would be like oh i didn't know i can do this within combos to beat people more efficiently and it's just a really enjoyable experience like battles do not feel monotonous and because you spend so much time trying to master moves it's a lot for you to do the next noticeable change is with items and this is kind of a headache so please bear with me so we've always had customization in tails they changed it a little bit so instead of having materials to upgrade your weapons you now fuse the same weapon with each other to up the stats of its attack defense and everything else like that that's simple enough but the hard change with items that they recently made is this thing called item stacking and it's a complete nightmare when you first start with it so i'm gonna try to explain it the best i can pretty much you can see where i have this arrow this thing is called the skill sheet based on how you put the little diamond with the square box that you see that determines some of the abilities you can learn with your item now i know that sounds pretty simple right but here's the thing when you do that you will get some type of different item effects and they're random based on the weapon but there's also something else you can do which is you can kind of line up those stars kind of like to connect four and when you do that what it does is it actually gives you a boost to all your stats so you can choose to line it up like connect four which is what i did the whole game and get these power boost to your stat to your stats as far as attack defense magic defense all that good stuff or you can choose not to do that 
to get special abilities by lining them by putting them some other way on this skill sheet that's not lining them up in a row so it's really confusing because playing around and not opting for the attack and defense bonus can give you other effects that you may want for any particular reason i didn't really find any reason to not line them up like connect four for the actual stat boost but if you play around with it there may be some type of special abilities or skills you get from not doing that but it's, it was a real pain. There was a lot to mess around with. So I really didn't bother with it too much. But I pretty much explained it to you. You can play around with it to learn different abilities. Or you can just line it up like a game of Connect 4 and get attack and defense boost. And that's the best way I can explain that. The graphics in this game are great. You can tell they put a lot of work into it looking more upscale for the next gen console which is what a lot of games should do and little scenes like the mystic art here were a great treat to enjoy as far as optimization goes there were some small issues like this one right here yeah I literally had to be behind her to speak to her. That's a huge bug that needs to be fixed. Other optimization issues that's been talked about within the community among Steam and Twitch for PC is that there's been some voice synchronization issues if you have a medium to low end computer. Now I know they put out a patch to fix it and I haven't heard anybody in the community say anything about it so I'm not sure if it's working or not since I didn't have any issues. I know that if you play this game with a high end computer you don't have any issues at all and my computer is fairly high end so I didn't have any issues myself but if anything comes up in the community since nobody said anything about having issues after the patch I'll tweet it or add it to the description so you guys will know. But there weren't too many optimization issues other than the ones I just mentioned to you guys. So customer service wise, Bandai Namco did this game right. You can look here in the Steam community and recommend it, recommend it, recommend it. There's a lot of people that are truly enjoying this game. There's like 900 something reviews. I'm not going to go through all of them, but I'm just kind of scrolling through and let you see how many people are actually enjoying this game. On top of that, as you guys know, I complained a lot on my channel about microtransactions and pre-orders and why they're a pain. But Bandai Namco did this right, which is why I pre-ordered. Now, for those of you that don't know, since Tales has never been on Steam and this is the first Tales game to come on Steam, what they did was, if you pre-order Tales of Zestria, you got all of these DLCs that you see here. And for those of you that's looking, that's like, but Retro, I have to pay for Mystic Arts? No, you get Mystic Arts in the game, but they do give you like three secret Mystic Arts for actually getting the DLC. So no, you'll have all the regular Mystic Arts and stuff. They're just like additional ones. Ones that honestly, I haven't even used. And then... What you also get, which is the biggest thing, is Tales of Symphonia. Now, Tales of Symphonia is not yet on Steam. They're making it, but if you pre-order the game, as well as the little DLC stuff I told you about that you got for free, you get Tales of Symphonia for free, too. Also, keep in mind, for those of you that decide not to pre-order the game, you can still purchase the DLC costumes if you want them, or when Tales of Symphonia finally releases on Steam, you can still purchase it. So... If you pre-order, you get these things for free, and if you decide not to pre-order but you want them, you can still pay to get them, which is the way it should be done. And one of the main reasons I'm bringing this up is because Bandai Namco is the same company that made Xenoverse, and if everybody remembers, if you didn't pre-order that game, you didn't get Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta. You couldn't even buy him later. You just had to pre-order, or you had no opportunity to have him at all. But they fixed that up and did it properly with Tails. Yo, kudos to so, what's my final verdict on this game? This game is fire! You like RPGs? You're gonna like this game. You like advanced combat tactics with a high learning curve that feels fulfilling when you're completely crushing your enemy and style with swag? You're gonna like this game. You like anime, goofy anime, comedy and humor? You're gonna like this game. 
every review I've seen so far has been nothing but positive about this game. And even the people that said they had small optimization issues still recommended it and enjoyed it on the Steam page. So if you enjoyed this review, go ahead and leave it a like. Also in the comment section below, let me know whether this review helped you or if you have the game, what your experience with the game has been. But other than that, I've been Retro Bro and I am signing out. Like the video? Well, why don't you check out RonRetroBro.com where I showcase my favorite YouTubers, videos from subscribers like yourself, the latest in news, you can listen to the music I'm bumping, and I post my blog stories and news entries here. It's a place for us gamers to kind of get to know each other more and kind of let smaller YouTubers like us get better noticed.